Hey guys, I'm sure you uh, saw it coming, probably already guessed it, gonna have to pull the engine. Uh, the reason being is because that bearing is, uh, it's not only embedded in the crankcase, but behind it is an oil seal that is impossible to get to. And that oil seal was what was leaking and what I was seeing through that telltale hole. So the only way to get to it, and it sounds crazy because it is crazy, is to pull the motor, completely disassemble it, split the crankcases, and replace what needs to be replaced. Um, you know, you can pay for shop time for that, but I'm not gonna do that. I'm gonna go ahead and tear it into it and uh, see what happens. So far, um, I've gotten it out of the bike, got it on the engine stand, and um, I've gotten all the timing marks lined up for the front cylinder. And uh, so, I'll come over here. So there's two dots that they say to line up on the front cylinder to get it to TF down here. You rotate the motor to get to TF, top front, and the, the mark right not next to it. Tells you you're at top dead on the front cylinder. And then up here, you'll see that you'll have two uh, circles and you'll get them lined up here at the head and then down in here which I doubt you can see you'll see a, the sprocket for the the middle sprocket and it's got a dot on it also it goes directly upwards and uh, and that's how you know you're tearing these things down and uh, top dead center on the front I wanted to make sure that that was all squared away before I started pulling it apart. We have loosened all of the tensioners, taken the tensioners out up here. There's still one down at the at below, but they said just take this, these two out. And then um, the oil line that comes through here, take that out. And then we have a loose chain right here. Now we're just uh, taking these bolts off in reverse sequence. So they are numbered here, uh, highest being 10. We just did seven, seven's loose. Uh, let's do six right here. And we're just cracking these bad boys loose. Not going any further. You see the numbering right there. And so we're gonna get this off and then we'll continue with the disassembly. We got, uh, there's a kind of a, a loosening sequence to the head. You wanna do the smallest bolts for first to uh, keep uh, the stress to a minimum on them. So you, you do the six millimeter bolts up in here first, that's what we did. And then we went to the outside and we did these uh, six millimeters. And then we, on either side of the cylinder head, uh, there were eight millimeters. And uh, we took those out and then we went to the big 10 millimeters in here and we took all those out. Now I'm gonna go ahead and pull this head off and you wanna watch this chain and we'll see what it looks like on the inside. It's kinda of difficult to, there we go, pop it loose and pull it up evenly. And then lay that chain out. And there we are, looks pretty decent. We have both cylinder heads off and uh, we went ahead and lifted it up onto the bench. It wasn't that heavy at that point. Everything's at a really good working height now. Now we're gonna start taking these cover bolts off and uh, just kinda working our way around, getting the cover bolts off so we can expose everything, see what the next step is. So far I have <clears throat> I just removed the bolt for the alternator. Uh, the manual has told me so far that the only bolt that should be left-handed thread, which means you remove it clockwise, is gonna be this one right here, the balancer on the alternator side. Um, I also removed this to use a, a small flathead screwdriver bit to um, pry that out, that tab out, and then 
um, use an impact or whatever you got to get that loose and that's exactly what I did it worked perfectly um, over on the other side I have the primary gear off that links to the clutch uh, I took the, uh, the clutch discs out I just have the balancer this one should be right hand thread so I should be able to just turn it uh, counterclockwise to pull it off I have a starter I need to pull that and uh, and then we should be cooking we have everything pulled from the crankcase and uh, I believe I have everything off that needed to come off in order for the crankcase to split at this point I cleaned everything up real nice I didn't want to get uh, run the chance of getting too much debris that I didn't have to into the crank crankcase and then have to clean it all out <clears throat> so I cleaned everything up as good as I, I could and um, I think it turned out all right um, there were a couple problems while I was tearing all this down and that was that I had a vibration issue uh, to begin with and I was hoping to solve it while I was in here you know as an added bonus of having to tear this down so um, I went searching for it uh, each balancer on each side there's two balancers one on each side and uh, they were this one was really crusty the the one on the starter side was was uh, uh, a little crusty and I'm kind of wondering if that bolt was loose it seemed a little bit loose but that's not a big deal but then when I came over to this side I pulled this one out it looked good from the outside because all you can see is obviously the the pulley but um, as soon as I did just uh, a shard of this uh, I'm guessing the proper name for it is bushing uh, just came loose and uh, fell onto the workbench so there was that problem I had a little bit of flex in this I'm not sure if there's supposed to be any play in there so I went ahead and ordered um, all new uh, just uh, rubber pieces and, and bushings and and all of that hopefully that fixes my vibration issue um, like I said it was just uh, it was more uh, just uh, vibrating out towards the, the back of the bike and the passenger could really feel it at that point so um, I'm hoping that solves that I'm ready to go ahead and take these crankcases apart like I said everything looked really good over here and you know the pistons will clean up really well and uh, I just bagged and tagged everything and threw it out on the desk in a sort of a, a particular fashion you know I have the, all the front over here the rear over here and then I have the crankcase over here and uh, as you can see I had some parts on the bottom too but those are mostly just the big parts and covers and things like that so uh, this is where I'm at I'm ready to split this these uh, cases and see what's on the inside hopefully we should be able to get to this bearing and seal from the inside alrighty crankcase is split split as you can see um, really wasn't difficult at all what I did was I got this big pry bar screwdriver and I put it in each of the pry points there's one on the on the front of the case and there's one on the back and each one I just took uh, I just stuck it in there and then I took a crescent wrench and put it on there and gave it a twist and uh, the pry points are at each one of the dowels so it just popped it loose real easily and uh, <clears throat> I followed the directions to a T I didn't want a chance getting any of these gears popping off and everywhere and so what I did was um, I laid the left hand crankcase downwards which is the alternator side and then I lifted up the right hand side case which is the starter side or the clutch side and so now I have access to the bearing that I need to change 
Everything else looks pretty decent so far. I'm gonna look through it all. You know, I went through the crank case, replaced the O-rings that I needed to, uh, and uh, then, you know, we just put it, I put it back together, and now we are just working on the bottom end, you know, um, all the outside accessories. Uh, it's been going together pretty decently uh, so far. And uh, if you come down in here on the other side, uh, you'll see that I did get the new bearing figured out. I was able to uh, replace that bearing. So now it looks nice and, nice and brand new. Uh, I got it. I was able to track down a brand new impeller shaft because the old one was just rusted and rotted and pitted. But you look at this, and uh, my concern was that it was not going to seal very good at all, especially considering the oil seal that's on the other side of this uh, ends up right there on the rusted part. So I went with an all new impeller shaft, and uh, I think it's going to work out really well for me. All right, so we got the clutch hub on and everything. And um, the problem I had was this nut goes on about 98 foot pounds. And so the problem was that, <clears throat> you know, the manual kind of shows you one of these old school contraptions to, to fit in here and um, hold the inner clutch in place okay you got to make sure it's all the way in there all the way seated and then you tighten that little knurled handle up at the top and uh, you get it you have to get it really tight I used a pair of ice grips to get it super tight it slipped a couple times I'd hit myself in the chin trying to get it torqued down it was a really bad deal uh, but that's kind of beside the point because I can't go any further unless I can hold this outer hub uh, still. So what I ended up doing is just kind of chalking my losses with this thing. And I went ahead and got online and found this. It's uh, from EBC. Let me see if I can get it matched up. EBC makes it, brake company. And um, what it does is it holds both the inner and the outer hub completely still so that you can torque everything you need and it also you know has the ability to have an opening so that you can get to the uh the nut on the hub so it does kind of look flimsy it is you know but it it feels solid in your hand but you know, I'm sure you're wondering whether it can torque 98 foot-pounds that you need. A lot of guys have had success. Some have had failure. The only thing is that it comes up kind of short. So unless you have a buddy, you're not going to be able to just use this handle. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put like a cheater bar on it. And it doesn't have to be very big. It just has to be enough to be able to hold, hold the hub still while I crank on these bolts and get them all torqued to spec. On another note, the water pump, you know, the manual says do not use RTV. It had, um, you know, it had that seal sealant on the mechanical seal around it. And um, I went ahead and put some RTV blue on there, uh, good for sealing water pumps and such, because I was a little nervous about the um, you know, the damage that had kind of taken a toll on the, the ridge and the inside rim of this uh, housing. And I didn't want to take any chances. So I did that. I put the case on. I had pressure tested it up to 16 PSI with water. I got no leaks out of the telltale hole. So that means this, this whole job is sealed up nicely. I'll keep, uh, you know, I'll keep you guys posted on how how well it does over time, but I think it'll be just fine. Um, so that's kind of where I'm at. Do this at your own risk. I thought it would be just fine. So, you know, you guys do the math and see what you think. At this point, during uh, reassembly and cleaning, I kind of shut the camera off just to, 
and get everything done. Uh, I was doing a lot of experimenting, especially with cleaning and uh, putting it back together that it took, um, it took some extra time and redoing a, a few things. It wasn't really able to be recorded. It, I took a lot more pictures than I did video. So I'm gonna walk you guys through some of what I did on this, uh, putting it back together. On the whole cleanup phase, what I did was, you know, I just took uh, a lot of brake cleaner to clean the uh, carbon off of the heads and off the pistons. And then uh, what I did was used a uh, three, three blade hone and I honed the cylinders just did a few passes, nothing crazy. I just wanted to be able to reseat the um, new rings that I was gonna put in and, uh, and just get rid of the glaze that was in the cylinder. And that worked out really well for me. I cleaned everything up as good as I could. Like I said, I used brake cleaner, I, I used uh, rags. I scraped all the old gaskets off. And when it looked pretty close to brand new, um, you can't make everything 100% perfect, but I, got, I thought I got pretty close. I started reassembly. I wanted to at first, I wanted to put the crankcase accessories back on, but I ended up taking those off and putting the cylinder heads on first and getting all the timing chains set with the cams before I put any of that stuff on, just because a lot of it was covering the chains on the lower end and so it was really hard to get it all timed with that stuff in the way. So laid all the hydraulic lash adjusters out. I bled them one by one, cleaned them out with kerosene, like the service manual said. And then I went ahead and put those in, got those situated, and then put the cams back on, timed them to top dead center. On the front, I did that one first and then I got it lined up on the rear cylinder and timed it. As far as the crankcase accessories, I got the clutch hub nut secured first and I did that with the old school clutch holder. And then I moved to the new deal that I picked up that holds both the basket and the hub together, inner hub and the outer basket together. and. Uh, I torqued down the primary gear bolt. And then I went to the other side and I used this strap wrench that I got from Northern Tool for about 20 bucks. And I held onto the rotor and I torqued it. It worked really well. The nylon strap didn't hurt anything, didn't harm anything. And then I was able to move on to the uh, balancer bolt. Using the same method, I just used the strap wrench to hold all that still. You gotta pay attention to all the alignment marks on all that. It lines up, it's pretty straightforward, didn't cause any problems. I got all that taken care of. Then it was just on to putting the side covers on, putting new gaskets on, and uh, and then we were ready to put it back in the bike. Uh, it was all, it all just kind of went together after you figure it out. We got the engine back in the bike and I'm gonna go ahead and let you guys hear the fire up for the very first time. <laughs> 